Trustee Cook? Here. Trustee Oppenheim? Here. Trustee Takaoka? Trustee Hebda? Here. Trustee Schultz? Here. Trustee Marquardt? Here. We have a quorum. Would everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is there any citizens that wish to address the board tonight on anything other than what's on committee to whole? Because if it's on committee to whole, we'll, we'll recognize you then. Yes. I want to state your name, please, for the record. Lisa J. Um, I'm here tonight as a community member, a taxpayer, a parent of children who went through Hawthorne K through 8, and a former school board member of eight years. And I want to share my thoughts on the last board meeting and also on the growth of our district. Um, words cannot describe how difficult it was to watch the last meeting. We as a community are to work together, to collaborate, to bring strength, healthy growth, share ideas, problems, concerns, and most of all, solutions. Mayor, your role is to set an example of integrity, honesty, collaboration, and to work with others in a respectful manner. None of the above mentioned was exhibited at this last meeting. The intent was very obvious. Throw the board and superintendent under the bus. You called up board members that were attending the meeting as observers and expected them to answer questions you relentlessly threw at them and in such an accusatory, condescending, negative, and badgering way. You showed in your verbal and physical delivery to the school board community distrust, lack of responsibility, and you did not have your facts. I'm truly disappointed that the remaining village board members did not step up and stop the behavior. You're all elected by taxpayers of this community, and your role is to represent all the constituents with respect and their best interest in mind. Now on to the growth. The housing development and lack of space for the children in the schools will negatively impact our community. People move to an area because of the schools. How do you think we'll be able to continue to bring in new families if classrooms are overcrowded, in trailers, possibly no room for fine arts programs? Losing programs at the K through eight level not only impact our current students and their development, it will also impact the high school program. Our taxes will continue to go up and our home values down. Is this what you want for our community? The three housing developments that are currently under construction is a decision the village made without discussing with the school board. They communicated to the school board the development was going to take place, but not have a discussion. If my numbers are correct, the three developments will bring in approximately 160 K through 8 students. Um, the impact fees collected from the de development is approximately $700,000, a one time payment. This one time payment is $4,400 per student. Last year, 2017 annual budget allocated approximately $13,000 per student, and with that, we are short in funding for our district to take on the current growth without the new development. The math does not work, especially in an already crowded district. How can a one-time contribution of roughly $700,000 cover additional building space, teachers, utilities, maintenance, and busing? And based on the decisions that have been made for collecting minimal impact fees, you're questioning the budget of the district and why the district is short funding for this growth. A question I have is how many of the village board members have attended past meetings the school board conducted for community input and decisions of the plan for growth in our schools? It is the board's responsibility to be proactive and participate in important topics that impacts everyone in this district. What are you doing to help find a solution for the overcrowding which you brought on to this district? And what has the village committed to contribute financially? I could only hope moving forward that the behavior changes and that the mayor and the board, you all take a vested interest in our schools. For this is the foundation of a thriving community. Please show respect to all and any of the people that present themselves to you in this environment or any environment outside of this room. Thank you for your time. And what's your name again? Lisa J. Okay, Lisa. Well, Lisa, some of the things you just said, you know, you're kind of shooting from the hip. So how do you actually know how many children are going to be coming out of 
these three developments? I asked sources. Oh, that do you, can you share those with us? Sure, I asked the district. Okay, and they said how many children for, for the elementary school? Approximately 160. Really? Okay. That was the information. That's why I said if my fact, my numbers are true, that's where I got my information. And, and do you do you know that there will be taxes paid, obviously, Absolutely. by by Pulte? Isn't that the impact fees? No, no, no. It's it's called a real estate tax that all the homes will pay, coming out right. of Pulte and Woodland Chase. Right, but that's that's a wash if you think about it, because we're getting thirteen thousand now for each student. So we'll get 13 from that student. We still don't have enough well, money I mean, for the growth. You know, in reality, though, these, these people are going to have six, $700,000 houses. What was the number we threw together, Chief? And we shared it with uh, the school board. In fact, uh, Matt Jacobs is here. And Matt, you know, thanked us for, for sending him the information. Yeah, I believe uh, for Pulte, the property tax going to District 73 is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.3 million a year. A year. A year. Okay, but that so can is, you hand? I mean, will that help anything? No, because the way I'm looking at it yeah. is right now, roughly thirteen thousand dollars in the 2017 budget per child. Mm -hmm. So that will bring us annual income per child. We're still short additional monies for all the growth well, coming here, in. Here's, here's what we're going to do. Mayor. Uh, no, I, I, you, in a second. Here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to give the school board and, and yourself and everybody that lives in town the numbers that are actually generated out of the retail sector and out of the business park that offset our tax liabilities, okay? Mm -hmm. And that'll help maybe you understand immensely where the money really comes from. I would love to see oh, all the money be, come into the district. And, and you've lived in town how long? Oh, long time. 20 years, 30 mm -hmm. years? Over 20. Okay. Well, you know we've helped the schools every time we could. You don't believe that? I can't say I know for fact. So well, I, I'm not well, saying I thought you were at true. a school board at one time. I was, but not for 20 years. Okay. Well, how do you think the high school came to town? Was that just... The snuffle up a Gus Ferry showed up? No. Okay. A lot of time and effort went into that and all the other schools in donations of funds from the developers. And then the business parks help immensely or our taxes would be out of, the, out of this world. Be absolutely out of this world. It was just a bedroom community. Mayor, if I could. Yeah, Trustee Cook. Um, I, I agree with you about us being part of it, and that's why I attended almost every, probably every meeting that they had planning the previous referendum. Um, partially, well, we all went par those. partially because um, I come at it from several different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. As you know, I had uh, your son, Ed, Ed, and um, I think some of those numbers, and I'll be glad to share with you what I've got, but those numbers are, are, are way off. The 160 is extremely high. Um, all of Greg's Landing is only about 0.4 kids per unit. And, and you're talking um, this, the Focus Apartments will probably bring in 15 maybe students out of 200 some units. Right now we have the 300 unit one down here that's only giving District 103 35 students, which is you know, below what we expected. Um, the the Pulte one is 120 some units, and so that would be at most 60 kids. That would be at a half a kid per unit, which, as I said, historically we've never achieved half a kid per unit. Um, the current expand, the current amazing growth in the schools all happened before any of this was approved. It's a generational turnover mm -hmm. of of Hawthorne Club and especially Deer Path. Um, and that's where some of the surprising numbers came from. But we're, we're definitely, I mean, I, as long as I'm on this board, I'm going to work with the school district as much as possible to make sure we've got the right numbers and the right projections. I see, and I, and I, and I can share these numbers with you, you know, if you, if you want to give me a call in more detail. I think that every kid that comes in from those homes like Pulte and Woodland Chase is going to bring in at least twice as much as the school's going to be spending on the kid because of the fact that they're going to be seven or eight hundred thousand dollar homes because that was what we when we originally when greg's landing was originally built 20 some years mm -hmm. ago we were looking at at 
a, a number then which adjusted for inflation, these homes are going to be at about that. And we had to have a home at that value in order for the, the students coming in from there to be a positive cash flow. Um, and, and so I, I really think we're, I really think those numbers are a little high in terms of the total number of students coming in. Uh, in fact, quite a bit high. I would say it's probably going to be more half that or less. Um, and, and like I said, I'd, I'd be more than happy to sit down with you and share the numbers I've gotten at. And some of this is based on a gentleman by the name of Jess Porras, who's I believe still in the area. Um, he was the business manager for Hawthorne when we built Craig's Landing. And boy, he's the best I've ever known at projections. And, and he was everything that was built in the late 90s and on in the early 2000s, he was right on the money or even guessing a little high. So, so I really kind of trust those numbers. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Trustee okay. Schultz. Uh, yeah, before, oh. <laughs> um, first off, um, don't appreciate the entire board being tarred with the same brush if you were tarring someone, because I thought I was very respectful to uh, the board members in asking some very serious questions and trying to define where they're at. So I don't appreciate that. But moving forward from that, I asked staff about a year ago to put together uh, the proposals um, with regard to student populations and where they come from, because I too am concerned about it. I've, I've got a granddaughter that just graduated, and you know, it's it's important for us all to work together and understand. And the numbers that I came up with for Hawthorne Elementary, and this includes Focus, Pulte, Woodland Chase. At this point in time, I call it Swanson Martin. Uh, the Commons 2, Fort Clinton Place 2, which is the townhomes now, uh, Amley, Aspen Point, Oaks, Port Clinton Place, I already said that, Commons 1, River's Edge, Poets Corner, which was the fill-in off of Greenleaf, um, and all those, those were all the new developments that have come before this board since I've been on this board, and I just finished my 13th year here. And that comes out to be 160 students at uh, District 73 out of 4,400 students that are currently there. Mm -hmm. That 160 is probably a very high number okay. because I have within there uh, the uh, focus at uh, 47 students. That has been reduced significantly because of the style and type of living arrangements that we're looking at them having now as opposed to what was originally in some of the very very early, early planning a lot more studios one bedrooms uh, these are people that are not having a whole lot of kids so even at a high point of 160 kids by all these developments that's only again three four percent of the total population yet as the mayor uh, discussed earlier we're going to be generating a lot of real estate taxes. I know staff is working on pulling together the, the real estate taxes, but you talk, you know, the, the homes in Greg's, I know some people that have some mid-priced homes, and they're over 20000 so that means seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars 10000 going to District 73 out of their tax bills. So these homes that are being built, the Pulte and the Woodland Chase, are going to be generating at least that much. So... You start doing the numbers, and there's some significant revenue inflow that's going to be generated with very few children. So I'd just like to have that put out there. Actually, your number's a little high because several of those are 103. Uh, hey. No, no, I, I took out the 103. The I, one. Yeah, one, uh, 103 uh, has really uh, taken a, 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 an almost unfair share. They've got 101 versus the 160 going to Hawthorne. And, you know, they've been before us uh, previously. I'm talking about uh, Lincolnshire Prairie View District, mm -hmm. and we've tried to accommodate them as, as best we can. But apparently they feel as though they're in a better position right now with the uh, construction programs that they already have ongoing, and they've stayed ahead of it. And just one other point. I'm the grumpy old man now on the block uh, in that when I moved in 29, 28 years, no, uh, 29 years ago this September, uh, we were the young family. 
I had a, a 11 year old boy and a 10 year old girl. Well, my 10 year old girl has a 14 year old girl mm -hmm. that just graduated from Hawthorne. And my 39 year old boy has a five year old and a four year old that will be attending the schools in Mundelein. So I'm still the only owner, but I don't know any of my neighbors really per se anymore because in the last year, Hawthorne Club has been on fire. Mm -hmm. And the generational change next door to me, they have one and I believe one and a half children. Uh, another one on, uh, next door the other way, three kids, two doors down, two kids, uh, two doors down uh, yeah. further. They've got two little ones going the other way, uh, one child, uh, and on and on it goes. The whole neighborhood has changed, mm. and it's a generational change that Trustee Cook alluded to earlier mm -hmm. that talks about a significant change in the population demographics in this town from senior citizens to young adults with young families. Mm -hmm. Trustee Appenheim. Just going to ask Trustee Cook, when you looked at those numbers, did you take into account um, space constraints and was there a certain threshold that if you brought in a certain number of people that you would require, we'd need another building? I was just curious if that was looked into. Uh, and we're already at that space constraint. You are correct. And, and that's why the school board is, is doing real good work on putting together um, a, a referendum for future expansion that because the numbers coming from the stuff the current housing stock pushed us to the to the to the brink and and um, that was why again you you know with our budget that we put in the money to help build the the kindergarten center and that and um, um, yeah that's that's um, all been taken into account and and hopefully we'll only push us a little more right now they're at you know, several of the buildings are pretty close to capacity and several are at capacity. And a point of information, I voted for the last referendum and I will vote for the next referendum because <laughs> I do believe that well, I think we you're, all you're trying yeah, to. Yeah, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, I, and I was just going to say one last comment. This, yeah. this school district serves more than just Vernon Hills. It does, it's Mundelein, Indian Creek, uh, the, the, parts of Libertyville, south of, I think, Green Tree Parkway. You got Medawa, and I'll throw in unincorporated areas to boot. So the 4,500 children that are educated in this district don't all live in this town. So, and I'm sure the school board members are well aware of that. Okay, all right, what do we got next? Anybody else want to, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Michael, Michael Shank. Can I see your name? I'm Logan Shank. I'm going to give you your address, please. 587 Central Park Place, Vernon Hills. Good evening. I'm a Vernon Hills resident of 15 years, and I'm a parent of three children, all of who are in District 73. I'll be honest. I rarely attend village meetings, but I occasionally view the meetings online. But tonight I felt compelled to come and speak. Two weeks ago, the District 73 School Board came to ask permission to extend the portable classroom outside Elementary South, but the opportunity by leadership was taken to run the gauntlet on them regarding the Kindergarten Center, future plans, and the communication to the community. I definitely did not feel very proud to be a resident after watching them spar and then reading about it in the Tribune, but hope was restored when Trustee Schultz reeled it back in. The school board, in my opinion, has communicated very well what they are trying to do, trying to find the right solution that helps the learning environment for the children and one that's also fiscally responsible. They have had countless open meetings, allowing for discussion and ideas from the community, and even providing childcare so more can attend. They sent out notices via mail, social media, email, and the school websites. <clears throat> when the referendum, excuse me, when the past referendum failed 15 months ago, this is what would have been used for the additions and renovations only. They were still planning to go ahead with the kindergarten center, which was always planned to be financed from the cash reserves, cash reserves to the tune of $12 million. Unfortunately, the bids came back 2.7 million higher than budgeted. The cash reserves are not as strong as they have been, so other ideas had to be entertained before anyone sticks a shovel in the ground. Situations change. 
As an example, the village will be adding a 1% food and beverage tax, not uncommon for municipalities, but likely brought on for the loss of sales tax revenue. Who saw Toys R Us or Carson's going out? Sears maybe, Babies R Us, there's a loss. You have to figure out how not to run a deficit. Well, the school district had to do what they had to do by reviewing different options. So I feel it's counterproductive to try to paint the school board in a bad light in a public forum. Instead, how about a better collaboration from all, party, all parties involved? It's, this issue is about the children in our town and the educators that teach our children. I know the park district reworked the new gym to accommodate the, the new kindergarten center. I know that. I know there's a $500,000 earmarked in the budget to help with the site costs for the new kindergarten center if it goes through. I'm not sure if it's a loan or a gift. A gift would be better. <laughs> Mayor Byrne, the few times we have spoken, you brought up how the village built the high school. And it is. It's a great high school. It's highly ranked. I can look at my neighbors on both sides of my house. One goes to an Ivy League school. One is at the Boston Conservatory for Performing Arts. Across the way, she got a perfect score on her ACTs. This can give you a snapshot of the education these kids received. But if we don't act as a community to address the overcrowding and much needed updates to the elementary and middle schools now, the foundation our children will need for high school and beyond will slowly start to erode. I'm not talking about paying for having the village pay for these projects, but I am talking about support and some financial help to ease the burden. Public, out, public support when a referendum comes on would be great. I know the budget is finalized for the year for the village and the 1% food and beverage tax is probably already likely accounted for. But maybe take a look at ways to move forward. Maybe the school district finance director can meet with the village finance director and work the problem backwards, trying to find funds for the school district. Can the village work to make an annual contribution to the school districts? Maybe a village grant program for the schools each year for the schools. Maybe as the plans for the renovations and kindergarten center are being reviewed, maybe insight from the village managers and building departments to offer ideas for cost savings and efficiencies. If the school board, know, if the school board knows the doors are open, maybe all they need to do is ask. I would like to reference a Chicago Tribune article dated April 6, 2017, which was written after the mayor's re-election. Byrne said overcrowding at Hawthorne School District 73 is a problem he hopes to work with the school board on. He said various external factors are hurting local governments, but plentiful sales tax revenue is keeping the village in a position to help. Thank you for your time, and please remember the issue I speak of is about the children. Now, before I would ask to ask one question, the overcrowding issues exist. We see it every day. He sees it every day. The children see it every day, the teachers see it every day. You can answer, you don't have to choose to answer. How many of you have been in the schools during a regular school day, elementary south, for example, middle school north in the past year, with, with the principal during the school day? Have you seen, you understand? Thank you. So I think by supporting, you understand where we're at. So what we're looking for is for some help. And in fact, after that last meeting, I met with uh, Superintendent Brown, and uh, then uh, luckily the board president was there at the same time to uh, let them know that we were indeed going to keep working on helping work with them to get through that. It's important, and it's, they're working very hard, the school board. There's a change in leadership coming. It happens. It happens everywhere. Okay, they are working very hard tirelessly. I've never seen, I've been here 15 years. I've seen it kind of go through the redistricting. My son has seen it. I hope that we all can work together. Park District, the village, and the school board is one town. And I understand that there are several other towns that's associated here, but here we are in Vernon Hills. Okay, well you, you know, maybe you so. can't appreciate it, but I, I think, you know, my, uh, you know, I guess badgering is, is was mentioned, was frustration that came forward because we met for two years with the park district, with the school district, with us about this kindergarten project. And we were committed to putting in the $500,000 to take the road, you know, off yep. of Phillips, yep. behind Victory Center. Yep. And we had assembled the land there. You understand that. Yep. Okay, the eight acres there where, the, where Victory Center is and where the, the library is. Yep. And now probably part of this parking lot and road and everything. 
So as far as being behind a school referendum, you know, I've lived in town since 77. My kids went through the whole thing. So I've lost track of how many referendums I voted for, okay? Good. So, you know, and I'm still paying, and I'm paying, and it's fine, okay? And, you know, I didn't get the check back from anybody because I decided to send my two kids to Carmel High School. I'm still waiting for it. I don't think it's coming, though. I'm not holding my breath. So in essence, yeah, as far as I think everybody up here That's supports the schools, and, you know, this is your, you know, kind of first time around with a referendum, getting involved, right? Really? Oh, well, it's oh, it 15 months ago. Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. Well, kept, well you got to keep going now. Sure. Because the high school only took five referendums. You know that, I right? I know that. You told me that. Well, I know we did. So, you know, you, you got to persevere. I we'll, think we'll be here to support. I think it's good. Yeah. For the and, and our finance that. director is already meeting with Abe. So Very you're good. clairvoyant. Crystal ball. Take I care. wish I had a crystal ball on the numbers. Yeah, we all, we all do, you know? Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Oh, okay. President Patel. Yes. Sonali Patel, uh, Hawthorne District 73 School Board President. West Poland, Board Member. Julie Simpson, Board Member. Matt Jacobs, Board Member. Robin Cleek, Board Member. Uh, we wanted to go, previous meeting when we came. Oh, um, maybe the handheld mics, because I'm believing that you're going to say something important, so I want to make sure that it's very well heard on the, the tape. So sure. the handheld mics are usually First a two. lot better. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. One second. <laughs> you know, at the previous meeting when we came, we had come uh, to discuss the zoning permit for the mobiles. Uh, we were not aware that the group was interested in dialogue related to the EFMP and our budget. We were kind of caught off guard. We have had six community meetings and three board meetings since February 21st, which was our first community meeting, related to this very same topic. Communications were sent to the entire community via Hawthorne Highlights, as well as the community mailings were done for these meetings to uh, each home. The park district, as well as the village, have also helped in getting the word out for these meetings through their websites, through their newsletters, too. It would have been once hoped that the community members who are interested in this topic either attended or watched their card in meetings. The district does not make decisions as an individual. They are done publicly as a board, similar to you. And prior to making the decisions that affect all the community, we wanted to engage the community as holistically as possible, and that's why about nine meetings were held since February. At the May 30th meeting, the board decided that the kindergarten building at Sullivan Center would be part of the EFMP, which is a, which is a master facilities plan, along with our additions to other schools. The Sullivan Center, which is the kindergarten building at the Sullivan Center bids, had come out higher. We had already started the process with architecture and the land uh, surveys, and those bids came out higher to about $2.7 million. This does include the $1 million for the access road to Phillips to ease the congestion on Aspen, as was requested by the village. It was stated that expanding Aspen was cost prohibitive to the village, and in attempting to resolve the municipal traffic problem, our school district has expended thousands of dollars in civil engineering services for meetings driven by the village. These were the meetings that have been held. We still don't have a resolution on the final direction from the village on this matter as to whether it, the road would be the access road through Phillips or the bypass through the Victory Center, uh, Victory Center on the other side. These are still under negotiations. Ideally, the school district could construct a simple drive through Aspen for the buses to go and not have to construct an entire road, which has increased our budget significantly for that road. It is our request that the village help in finalizing a solution to this issue and reimburse the district for the constructing the road that resolves a municipal traffic problem. Three years ago, we had proposed expending about $12 million from our cash reserve to offset the cost of Sullivan. Since then, in the three years, we've added 144 students. The, that is an additional of 1.88 million of operational costs per year. The new revenue from the new construction in that three years has been $486,000. The CPI, which is our revenue, has been at an all-time low, at an average of 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and 2.1% for just a half of this year, so at 1.4%. The net effect of the cumulative 
cumulative operational deficit has been 5.3 million. We are in a very different situation now since three years ago when we proposed to put 12 million from our reserves. We will be making a final decision for a contribution from our cash reserves on our June 25th and July 9th meetings. We invite the community to attend these meetings to understand our budget. You can also view the June 11th meeting, which was our preliminary budget uh, presentation, which is held, it's on the board. In the meantime, knowing our deficit and operational, we were looking at different ways and means to increase our revenues to help for building the buildings as well as to increase enrollment that we have. And looking at what some of our neighbors, neighboring towns are doing, we just wanted to write a letter to the village to see if they could help us in some of the ways that we thought could be possible. Okay. Uh, President Byrne and the Village Board of Trustees, on behalf of the Board of Education, we write you today to ask for consideration by the village for taxes to supplement the district's finances. Over the past several years, Hawthorne 73 is faced with growing enrollment, 441 students, additional from 2008 to 2017, which is a 12% increase, space constraints, and ongoing operational costs. In order to maintain mandatory programs, class ratios, the district has had to hire over 50 additional teachers. With new developments coming online, the student population will continue to grow. Hawthorne 73's cost per pupil is $13,051, which is lower than our neighboring districts. Our operational revenue per pupil, $11,611, is one of the least among all Lake County elementary school districts. <clears throat> we have a varied array of housing options, such as rental apartments in our community, which send in more students than the property taxes generated. An entertainment tax could be applied village-wide, or the village could divert funds from the sales tax, specifically from the TIF district of Melody Farms. The additional funds would benefit the district education fund and operations. Uh, thank you in advance, and to discuss the request, we're always available to talk. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other <laughs> citizens wish to address the board? You want to do this? Yeah, okay. I'm going to state your name for the record, please. Hi, Aaron Lawler, uh, Lake County Board Chairman. Uh, it's, it's a privilege to be here tonight. Uh, and to hear uh, kind of what we're all uh, in this to do, you know, to hear from our, our constituents and uh, our neighbors about uh, their thoughts on the work of our government and the work that we're elected to do. Um, I wanted to uh, share a proclamation honoring the service of Cynthia Hebda. Um, I would never want to make her uh, schlep all the way up to Waukegan and find parking and go through security to present her a proclamation. I thought I'd bring it uh, right here uh, to, to kind of your second home. Um, and instead of reading it, because I know you're going to do a proclamation, I was just going to share a few thoughts uh, on behalf of uh, the county board. You know, we hear today a, a lot about some, some contentious issues and uh, some divided ones. And I, th I think about uh, when Cindy uh, joined the village board, I was very young. <laughs> uh, and we didn't, we didn't have a Vernon Hills High School. Uh, we didn't have the Aspen Drive Library. We didn't have a post office. Um, we didn't have a triple A bond rating, I don't think, back then either. Uh, we didn't have a uh, village property tax, or did you? I don't know. No, did not. No, we never. Did not. Never, never have. No. But you think about all these things that we, we cherish about our community, uh, our schools, uh, the library, um, all of these institutions, the park districts that we have, and behind every major project has been the village and their support, uh, both monetarily, uh, Sometimes some good moral support is worth uh, uh, countless uh, dollars uh, and other things, donations of land uh, and, and support, and all without a village property tax. Uh, that takes leadership and it takes people like, like Cindy. I'm just so fortunate to call her a friend. Uh, as you can see from the Liquor Commission, she, you know when to be kind and patient and also when to be tough. Um, I wish that I could get some of my uh, liquor uh, violations to pay that quickly. Uh, tomorrow morning is a, is a good option. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that line. That, that was very good. Um, but I just want to thank you so much for all of your uh, mentorship, friendship, and service to this village. It's been uh, wonderful, and we're going to miss you.
Those are very kind words, and I'm looking out here at all of this, and that warms my heart because we are here for these kids. And I know your school board, I know, Julie, you're frustrated with what's going on. So am I. But unfortunately, I won't be here to help you out, but I certainly will do it from Indianapolis if I can do anything to help pass this referendum because these kids are what are important. Those softball players, are that's what makes this place great. And I think we all are very proud. I'm very proud to live here and call this place home. It will always be home to me. So thank you for this. And again, for the school board, yes, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. but. Hopefully we can move forward and we can resolve whatever the issues are and start talking some more dialogue because we have been talking for the last two years. And no, maybe you don't see all of us at your meetings, but we are watching and we are listening and we are sharing as much as we can. So anyway, but thanks for this. I appreciate it. Okay. Next item is uh, the thank you to 2007 eight and 18 Vernon Hills, Queens. Is Little Miss Vernon Hills 2017 Leah Cleek here? All right. So, <laughs> so yeah. all right. Leah, this, this envelope is for you. If you want to come behind the yeah. dais, please do. Any parent, take a picture. Yeah. Here, stay here for a while. Stay right, your stay right your mother wants a picture. <laughs> And you can stay there. Okay, why don't you stay there? Yeah. Right there. You're going to have company in a minute. All right. Uh, junior Ms. Vernon Hills, 2017, Madison Chirillo. Okay, Madison, here you go. <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, okay. Uh, Preteen Ms. Vernon Hills, 2017, uh, is it? Lanaya Gutierrez. Lanaya Gutierrez. Thank you. Okay, Lanaya, congratulations. And then Ms. Vernon Hills, 2017, Brianna Bol Bolatin. Congratulations. Did the parents get their shots? Okay. Group chat. Want a group chat? Oh, yeah. All right. Any of you ladies want to say anything? Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. put the little miss right in front yeah. of Miss Vernon Hills and we can see her. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, you want to grab the mic then? Yeah. Miss Vernon Hills? First of all, I would uh, just like to thank the Village of Vernon Hills, uh, Mayor Roger Byrne, and all the trustees for your continued support for the uh, Vernon Hills pageant. I've been involved in the pageant since I was seven years old, and ten years later, here I am, Miss Vernon Hills. So, I could, it wouldn't have been possible with all your help. The pageant really uh, has shaped me into the person I am. I can't imagine where I would be without it. It's, I've uh, gained confidence and friendships and just so many amazing skills from participating in this pageant. So thank you all so much for allowing that to happen. You're welcome. Anyone else? Are you sure that's on? I think you're here. Yeah. Here, give it to the chief. Let, let, check it. We ain't chief. <laughs> it's on. Okay. Okay. Okay, so first off, I want to start off by thanking all of you. The pageant wouldn't be possible without all of you and all of your support that you give us every year. So with that, the four of us just want to give the board just a little something to remember us by because you have just been a really big part of our pageant journey. The pageant wouldn't be here without you. So. Okay. Oh. <laughs> It's a candy bar. And our face is on it. Very nice. Very nice. I'll have to defer to counsel. Can we accept this? He took one, two. If we could eat it, we're okay, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. Thank you so much. 
All right, Thank girls. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, next is uh, the 2018 2019 Vernon Hills Queens. Are you all here? You want to come forward, please? Jayla Wasco, Haley Kalinowski, Annabelle Fisher, Jack, uh, Jacqueline, Jack, Jacqueline uh, Gallegos, and Ma Madeline Gut Gutierrez. Now, Little Miss Vernon Hills, is J Jayla here? Are, are, the pa are parents all here? Yeah, okay. Do you want them to move over a little? Are you getting the mics in there? Or? <laughs> okay. And then we have Junior Miss Vernon Hills Haley. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is uh, Junior Miss First Runner Up, Annabelle. Annabella. <laughs> Annabella. Okay. And then Junior Miss Second Runner Up, Jacqueline. Okay. And in Miss Vernon Hills 2018, we have Madeline Gutierrez. Okay, well, congratulations. Guys. Does anybody want to say anything? Yes, please. <laughs> Well, we just want to say thank you so much for continuing to put supporting efforts into this pageant each year and for letting us come here each year as well. Um, I know for me personally and for all of these girls who participate, we definitely love the pageant because of who it shapes us into. We definitely, as Brianna stated, we have grown into more confident women. We're intelligent because of this and we learn personal speaking skills that we'll know for a lifetime. So we just want to thank you for continuing to support us. Anyone else? All right, ladies, you're excused. We'll see you at the parade on the 4th and with all your other duties and uh, events you got to attend. All right, take care. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. And of course, Cassie Black is here. Cassie, Cassie is our pageant director. Do you want to you want to say a few words? No. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Yeah. For well, your support it's wonderful for the village and the park district. Everyone, it's just been wonderful. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we will miss you soon. Thank you. I'll be back, I promise. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, proclamation and recognition of Vernon Hills High School girls softball teams sectional championship. Are you all here? You want to? Yeah, you, you can come up to the podium. <laughs> now, is uh, Jordan Smith there? No. no. Jordan is not. Delaney Bowen? No. Uh, Lauren Ellis? Yes. yes. You want to raise your? Okay. Uh, Abby Wisniewski? No. No? Rebecca, is it Keefe? No. Keefe. Keefe. Okay. Is she here? No. No. All right. He, the ones that are here. Hannah, Hannah uh, Monteith? Uh, Brooke Peeper. Okay. Uh, Jesse Lee. Or Jess Lee. Okay. Uh, uh, Eli Elisa Handler. <laughs> Quinn, uh, is it Utter? Uter. 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 No. Quinn Uter. Margaret F uh, Fern uh, Fern She here? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tatiana uh, Guletsky, okay. Uh, Lexi uh, Viviano, okay. 
Nicole Peeper? Here. Okay, who's older? Oh, you are, okay. All right, Ra <laughs> Rachel Wright, <laughs> Mackenzie, yeah. uh, M Myler, yeah. and then Ashley, is it B uh, Buds Budziak? Budziak. Budziak, okay. All right, and the coach is here, right? Madison Johnson. Madison Johnson as well. Oh, Madison Johnson. Yeah. I got the, I went to the, the last game, which, you know, could have worked out better. Yeah. All right. Yes, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we have, I guess, proclamations for everybody, right? What? You want to, somebody, want, you want to pass these out? Okay, 2018 Vernon Hills High School girls softball team, whereas for the third time in program history, the Vernon Hills girls softball team has won a sectional championship. The Cougars' season highlights included, include becoming the Central Suburban League uh, North champions, winning the regional championship, and claiming the Class 3A sectional championship. The Cougars tied for fifth in state, losing to the eventual, eventual second-place finisher. Uh, whereas members and coaches of the 2018 Vernon Hills uh, high school softball team. Well, I read everybody off already, but uh, uh, we're, we got the coaches recognized on here? Yeah. Okay. Jan, uh, Jan Pauly, head coach. Okay. Dave Dorhofer, assistant. Uh, Kelly uh, Polis, is she here? No, Kelly and Kevin can make it. Okay. And, okay. and Kevin uh, Lorette? Lorette. Lorette. All right, uh, now therefore be proclaimed that I, Roger L. Byrne, uh, President of Village Board of Trustees, do hereby express our sincere, sincerest congratulations to the Vernon Hills High School girls softball team on making it to the Elite Eight in the 2018 IHSA Illinois Softball State Tournament Class 3A. Congratulations, girls. Does, does the coach want to say anything or? <laughs> Thank you for your support and for honoring us here tonight. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, any of the girls want to say anything? Oh, that's dangerous. I did, oh, so be it. Anybody, it's open mic night. <laughs> it is open mic. Is there a captain? No. Yeah, Tatiana is one of our captains. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, did you just grab the mic or did yeah. I? Yeah. Either one. First off, I'd like to say that we're honored to be here and thank you for uh, congratulating us today. And a very special thank you to Mayor Byrne for attending our super sectional game. It means a lot to us and I'd just like to say thank you personally. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank okay, you. Thank, you. thank you girls, great season. Great season. Okay, here's the... Hey, Dave, you want to take this one? This one. Okay. That's the master. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, what do we got next? You. No, me. We have Cindy. All right. Let me get rid of this. All right. Next is a proclamation. Uh, to Cynthia Hebda, in appreciation for dedicated dedicated service to the village of Vernon Hills since July 20th, 1993. All right, uh, Cynthia Hebda was appointed and sworn in as village trustee on July 20th, 1993 to, uh, to fill the unexpired term of Roger Byrne. Woo. Cynthia Hebda was elected and sworn in as village trustee on May 2nd, 1995. Uh, early in Cindy's tenure, she was known as the tree lady because good landscaping and clean <laughs> streetscaping were important to her. They still are. Cindy especially enjoyed the uh, charrette process used to design the Centennial Crossing subdivision and loves the uniqueness of each Vernon Hills neighborhood, charrette. I don't really like that word, but I, you know, 
it's a story unto itself. Cindy witnessed the construction of uh, the Village Hall, Vernon Hills High School, Aspen Drive Library, Vernon Hills Post Office, uh, expansion and remodeling of the Police Department, Public Works Buildings, development of the Greg's Landing and the Amley at Museum Gardens. Expansion of Hawthorne Mall, Aspen Point, shops at Greg's Landing, extension of Fairway Drive, construction of affordable senior housing at Victory Center, the village's contributions to the Vernon Hills Park District to expand Century Park, renovate Kids Castle Playground, and acquire Lakeview Fitness Center, and implementation of the village's strategic plans. Cindy has supported economic development activities resulting in the Vernon Hills Town Center, Melody Farm TIF districts, and the use of multiple economic incentive agreements to strengthen our retail base. As a trustee, Cindy worked diligently with her fellow board members to maintain a strong village budget and fund reserve that resulted in the village achieving AAA bond rating from Moody's and S&P and, and never had to levy a property tax. During her years of service, Cindy also developed a keen eye for signage and logos, which ensured new signs were placed in keeping with the character of the village. Cindy took the lead on architectural review of new, development, new developments and village properties. Cindy and Larry planned to move to Fishers, Indiana, to be close to their daughter, son-in-law, and beloved grandchild. What's his name? Cash. 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 Cash money, no. Cash. Cash, cash the man. Cash the man. Uh, after 25 years, good name. After 25 years of dedicated service, Cindy will resign her position on the village board as of June 30th, 2018. Uh, now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Roger O'Byrne, president and the village board of trustees, do hereby express our sincerest appreciation to Cindy Hebda for her years of dedicated service to the residents and employees of the village of Vernon Hills that wish her and her family well until we meet again. Okay, Cindy, well, congratulations. <laughs> All right, Steve, Steve. We get it. not leave it out some words. Um, I, I, can't believe that it's 25 years. That's just crazy. But um, there are many thank yous that I need to express. And first of all, to the department heads and your staff members, um, we couldn't be here without you. You guys have all done, both men and women, an amazing job and make us look good. Lynn, Dave Brown, Mike Atkinson, Mark, Lisa, Joe, all Pat, even though I know we didn't work that long together, you all have been amazing. So I can't thank you enough. And for those who aren't here tonight, please, please share my deepest appreciation for everything that they've done for me um, as a board member here in the village. Next, I need to thank my board members. Um, I've got some new ones. I've got some new ones, Dr. Dave and Craig, who's not here, unfortunately, but I hope you will continue to carry on the wonderfulness of this community and strive to work diligently with these other board members um, who have really committed themselves. Um, Mike, Tom, and Jim, I can't thank you enough for being here for me, for supporting me on issues that I've tried to bring across. We've had good discussions, we've had heartfelt discussions, but it's all been on a professional level and I really appreciate that um, from the bottom of my heart. I, I'm going to miss you guys. Um, I, I miss um, the women, of course. I'm the only and the last female survivor, so hopefully we'll see where that all brings us to. But, and then lastly, this gentleman to my left. Um, you put trust in me in 93, and you have been my mentor, and you have shown me so much greatness in this community, and I can't thank you enough for giving me an opportunity, thanks. Roger. It's been you, you were well worth. Oh, thanks. I mean, I do know I do know I challenged you one time. We won't go there, but um, it's been amazing. It's been great. You know, knew my wife quite well. Yes, I did. My wife vouched for you. Thank you. I'm glad Kathy's good. So, yeah. And. Uh, it's been awesome, and I mean, there have been many board members that I've worked with. Some are no longer with us. Don Hook, 
who passed away, who was a great person to deal with, um, Rich Cashman, Steve Henley, Jim Heyer, who's no longer here. But it's been an unbelievable journey. I feel proud of the accomplishments that I've given to the community. Hopefully I've left behind some positive things and there's always you got to have tough skin up here as you saw earlier you got to have tough skin to listen to to what's going on but um, i really do love living here and i don't think i won't stop doing this because i've always checked into fishers and there's the possibility that they need some help in their planning and zoning board i'm going to meet the councilman who's living in our neighborhood to see what he's like so um i don't plan to sit on my laurels at for, for long, I am semi-retired, but um, I just got a call from my daughter this evening to say, I've got a job, I have to watch my grandson one day a week because they're moving him to a new daycare, so I'm on for Monday, and if I can't be there, I need to find a replacement, so. <laughs> I'm on the hook. I've got to work. So, but I really, um, I'm not going to say goodbye. I will be back. I promise you. I'm already planning to come back for a few Cubs games, and I'd like to come back. I really would like to come back for the Melody Farms dedication because that's a huge project. But this is a great community, and whoever lives here is going to find out how great it is. I just went to the doctor to get a good checkup, and he's actually moving to Greg's Landing. Dr. Fernanda, my internist, and I said, you're going to love this community. And he's got small kids, so yes, he'll be bringing in children to the school district, but it's all good. Oh, he'll, become part of the he'll become part of the issue. So, but thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And um, please, if you're in Indianapolis, you know where to find me. I promise to leave you all the information. But um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a great journey and a great adventure, and I will miss you all very much. I just want to add my own little commentary. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to, I'm after, I've been on this, like I said earlier, I've been here 13 years. The first 12 years, I was the junior trustee, I think, or 10 and a half years, whatever. And I sat there. Now, while I've grown to love Dr. Dave here, I miss having you sitting here because we had some good sidebars. And we, we had some Gosh. good sidebars that, that helped us get through a lot of uh, prickly issues, and uh, I'm going to miss you. I've, I've missed you this last year and a half, <laughs> but uh, good luck to you, and, and Godspeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you'll see Larry Thursday, so he's working. Yeah, my husband has to work to make money. <laughs> but we are no longer two homeowners, thank God. So. Good. So, all right. Well, congratulations. And yeah, Thursday we're going to do yes. something for you. That'd be so. Okay. Right. Um, next is uh, summer celebration. Village manager, flesh shower. Mr. President, as you can tell by the weather, summer is here. And one of the rites of summer here in Vernon Hills is summer celebration. This year's summer celebration will be held from July 19th to the 22nd at Century Park. Thursday, the carnival opens at 6 o'clock with food, drinks, obviously, in the carnival. Entertainment at 7.30 is Henneberry, and at 9.15, the fireworks take place. Friday, again, it opens at 6 p.m. Uh, at 7 o'clock is Modern Day Romeos and Mike and Joe. Um, Saturday night, carnival opens up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. There's kids' crafts and face painting. Bingo going on, and at 7 o'clock, uh, the James Barker Band takes the stage. And they're opening for country star David Nail, who will begin his set at 9 o'clock. And on Sunday, there's a whole multitude of, of things. It's family day at the park. Uh, the park opens up at 1 o'clock with the carnival. There's kids' crafts, face painting, a petting zoo, kids' games, a bags tournament, all sorts of other things. Um, for more information, for the exact times, you can look at the Summer Celebration website, which is on the Village's website. Look forward to seeing everyone there. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, Joe, Chair, 4th Thank of July Parade evening activities. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a few uh, quick reminders. Uh, since this is the last Village Board meeting in June, that means 4th of July is just around the corner. Uh, again this year, the 4th of July event will take place uh, 9 a.m. Uh, right by the countryside uh, fire protection district uh, station there on uh, deer path we'll also have the evening entertainment which again will have uh, fan favorites uh, the big fun band 
which will be forming, as well as the fireworks show, which will take place at 9.30 in the evening. Other item um, under my report is the Arbor Theater concert series, which kicks off this coming Thursday um, at the Arbor Theater. Starting on June 21st, we will have Spoken For. Um, on June 28th, we'll have Suburban Cowboys. Uh, July 12th, we'll have Cadillac Groove. Uh, we'll take a week off for um, summer celebration and kick back off with, on July 26th with Johnny Rustler and the Beach Bum Band and wrapping up with, on August 2nd with the group Soda. Uh, which variety of groups this year. Um, we've got everything from uh, R&B to blues to Jimmy Buffett, Bob Marley, Rolling Stones, um, Dave Matthews Bands, and Kenny Loggins. So we've got a really great group of, um, of folks out who will be performing. Um, again this year, um, unfortunately, we had a number of rain events last year. Um, hopefully we don't have that this year, but we do have um, it all set up so any rain events will take place um, at the Sullivan Center. Okay. Chief, Chief, Chief Crease. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to take a moment to point out uh, two items that are in the omnibus uh, agenda uh, tonight. Ordinance number uh, uh, 111, 2018-111, uh, is uh, asking the board's consideration uh, for approval of an in-car, in-police car video camera system. This is a investment that is not just one year, so I wanted a couple minutes to speak with the board and make sure I could address any questions they might have. Um, it's essentially more of a system now rather than just installing a piece of a hardware. This um, is a network system that has two cameras, one that um, uh, one that records images in front of the police car, also one that records the back seat of the squad car. Uh, a body microphone worn by an officer that can activate the, uh, the cameras. They also activate automatically. They're constantly running a buffer, so if there was, say, a, a vehicle crash or when an officer activates the emergency lights, uh, the camera is actually already running a buffer and it, and it pre-records the previous 20 seconds. Um, What's nice about this system, it basically uploads the recordings into a very secure cloud-based system and um, very meaningful, the system is also accessible by the Lake County State's Attorney's Office so that uh, when the images and, and recordings are needed for court, it really helps eliminate the uh, chain of custody issues of having to record DVDs, bringing them to court, making sure they'll record or play properly, it simplifies the whole thing. Um, we're looking to not put it in every vehicle because that might be cost prohibitive. We're looking to put them in nine vehicles and the way we're using our vehicles now, those are the primary vehicles are at a, that are out there on patrol being used for traffic stops on a regular basis. And um, uh, the first year cost of this program uh, are about $27,905 um, up front. However, we have requested a and been uh, awarded a grant to substantially pay for that first year cost. Uh, the, the, the grant promise, as long as we can get everything done in time, is for $21,000 of that first year cost. The ongoing cost um, for this program are about $25,000 a year at the end of it, they promise to upgrade the equipment and then we'll probably have some ongoing um, uh, or reconsideration of the contract right. beyond that. Right. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. If not, I'll go on to the next ordinance. Any comments or questions? Trustee Oppenheim. Uh, I believe this is the one that I saw in the transmittal that there was a discount if if it was purchased by three days ago, was that extended? Yeah, we, we've contacted them and informed them that the board couldn't consider this until tonight. And, and so they're honoring that? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, ordinance number 2018-1112 is, again, uh, requesting consideration of the board to approve what will be a multi-year expenditure. Uh, this year, not to exceed... Um, $17,000, and that's what we budgeted. Uh, how, however, we think it's important to uh, talk with the board and, and inform them that uh, this is an ongoing expense. 
This is um, with a company called Lexapol. This company was found by a gentleman named uh, Gordon Graham, who uh, really created a field of, um, of risk management for law enforcement about 30 years ago. And it, the, this uh, system, Lexapol policy and risk management system has ballooned. It's really become the standard, what I consider the standard. There's over 3,000 uh, law enforcement agencies in the country that are contracting with Lexapol for this system, uh, well over 300 in Illinois. And this enables us to have a very sound set of policies to work with, keep updated, and um, if there is any court decision or updated law that comes out from the state, uh, there is actually crafted that the adjustments for the policy pushed down to us saves us a lot of time and administration from having to maintain constantly updated policies. It also comes with a system called the Daily Training Bull Bulletin that the officer on their smartphone, on their MDT, will actually uh, daily, every day they work, will get a little pop quiz that comes up specifically to our um, department policy, reinforcing what we call the high risk, low frequency events that happen in our, uh, in our world. So uh, I'm, I'm very much a supporter, but I would be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Next item is item was uh, vote agenda. Um, Mr. President, Mr. President, I, <laughs> I, I would like to pull uh, I for what I hope to be a unanimous vote in favor of it, but a on the record vote on that particular item uh, in support of our brethren uh, who were here earlier. And uh, the other item is I'm not looking to pull it, but I'm looking for a legal clarification on our capabilities within item Q. That's the Woodbine Circle where we're requiring a, um, a, sale, a, a letter uh, for the uh, potential buyer and to be uh, added to the deed. Uh, if they're not within our community, how can we require this? Well, we do have extraterritorial authority within a mile and a half within our planning area. Um, the concern is that, um, and staff raised this uh, informally, was that given the uh, topography in the area and uh, the presence of light poles that are very high in the VHAC, that um, there could be some spillover into the adjoining community and so forth. And so we thought it was prudent, rather than have these people come to your meeting at some point in the future and complain about these things, right. is that they be so advised of it up front. And I would add that the developer has agreed to do this, so we're working with them now to, to come up with appropriate language. Um, and we've told them that we would like to see this done um, at the time of contract so that whoever is purchasing would, would know up front or just be gi given a warning up front. So that, we do have that legal right even though it's it's outside our corporate limits certainly up to 7500 feet give or take i guess yeah okay thank you trustee appen uh i was hoping to pull o just for further clarification and discussion okay i don't know if we need to discuss that in closed session though or not But we're we're going to the closed session, as I understand. No. Are we not? Oh, I thought it said in the in the agenda. They put that on there just as a cautionary. Uh, it's on every agenda, but there is no closed session tonight. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, is there a motion to approve items A through H, J, K, L? Do, do, do. M N P, and that's about it for now. Q. You want Q? Well, no. Yeah, no, no. Q is fine. Add Q. Okay. I got my answer. 
Okay. So made. Second. Motion is second. Comments or questions? <coughs> if none, roll call. Trustee Takaoka? <coughs> Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, I is approval and passage of ordinance 2018-110, an ordinance amending ordinance 2016-030, ordinance 2003-40, and ordinance 2007-24, granting an extension of approval to amend the final site plan for temporary classroom structures a property, property commonly known as Hawthorne Elementary South on uh, 600 uh, Aspen Drive in the village of Vernon Hills, Illinois. So is there a motion to approve? So made. Second. Motion and second. Comments and questions. Roll call. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Yeah, for the record, I vote aye. Motion carries. Okay. <clears throat> What else we got? Item O. Everything else we, is approved. No, o. no item O. I oh, think it was oh, oh. O. Approval and passage of ordinance 2018-115, an ordinance amending ordinance 2018-073, authorizing approval of a $100,000 increase in payment for certain legal services for uh, fiscal year 2018-19. And that's for whose legal services? I if I could address this, Mayor, my understanding is that um, actually the agenda is slightly uh, mistaken the way it's written. Um, my understanding is that uh, because of the way we do budgeting, since Shane Banks is no longer the village attorney and I'm acting as vill interim village attorney, yeah. they needed to do a special authorization to slide me over into that with respect to the services I provide as the interim village attorney. So it's not specifically for labor issues, it's to move me into this seat. Yeah, it was a little bit unclear. It seemed like you were getting another $100,000 for labor issues, which no, the, probably a bit the, or, the original PO was for $50,000. Right. Obviously, it didn't contemplate when the budget was passed losing Shane Banks Bernie. So right. this will increase the purchase order from 50000 to a total of 100000 Will there need to be a... Uh, an amendment to the budget to move the 100000 from the Shane Burney account to? That's a finance question, but I think if it's, um, if it's budgeted in a separate account like that, yes, we'll have to do that. Okay. It, it could all be in the same account, just broken out separately. I'd have to look. Okay, so. Do you want to pull this in? Probably, just because if we need to do the budget adjustment, that would need to be part and parcel do it at the same of this. Because I, I always seem to recall that whenever we have a plus to one account, have we a have a, a minus to the other account. Yeah, that happens when we go from like one department to another oh, or right. one commodity item to another. This may be all under the same heading. It might be easier to pull it and we can adjust it. And if yeah. necessary, we'll bring it back. All right, we'll definitely first, bring it back, but if necessary. Is there a first on this? No, sir. No. 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 Okay. Well, we're going to pull it. Just pull it. We'll just bring it back for the next meeting. Does it, it, it can be just pulled. It doesn't need a motion to table it. Okay. We'll just pull it. And that's easy. Yeah, let's just, just pull that's it. That's easy. Okay. okay. All right. Next item is approval and pass the resolution to uh, 2018 035. Resolution granting approval to operate an outdoor dining and seating establishment for Burrito Express. 220 Hawthorne Village Commons. Is there a motion to approve? Oh, wait. No? Oh, okay. Hang on. Is that the petitioner? I don't know. No, they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Is the petitioner here for this? Anybody from the burrito? We want to come up here? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I can explain the request real quick if you wish. The. Uh, uh, Burrito Express uh, would be locating five tables with a seating capacity of approximately 30 customers on the existing patio that's been there in place since the previous right. restaurant was there to the west. They wouldn't be expanding the patio. Yeah, it's already fenced yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's fenced off. There's no alcohol that's served, so they're just simply requesting a licensed place furniture on the existing patio tonight. 
And what's your name, please? Gus. Gus. Yep. Just Gus. Bresano. Okay. Bresano. Okay. Any comments or questions for Gus? Yeah, I. We had I, the previous shows. agenda. I think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw. This is the first time I saw the the tables. I'm going to ask Trustee Hebda. I think it's great, and I love their restaurant. And I think it's I, perfect. I, I, I agree <laughs> with the restaurant. I go there. I'm Do you buy it. into the plastic oh. recycled yes. milk carton tables? Yes. yes. Because then I'm good to go. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, and it's oh. great what you guys did. We Thank waited you. and waited and waited. So glad you're open. Thank it's you. It's amazing. So motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. I'll be back. Any, <laughs> any further comments or questions? If not, roll call. Trustee uh, Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. motion carries. Uh, unfinished additional business. Approval and passage of resolution 2018-027, a resolution approving the purchase of uh, purchasing policy for the Village of Vernon Hills. Is there a motion to approve? So made. Second. Motion and second. Count Trustee Appenheim. So uh, I appreciate the edits that were made. So it's now clear that that the food and small gifts uh, just has to abide by the ethics rule. And it, it's consistent. We made the, the ordinance consistent with the state act. So, Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Hey, roll call. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Motion carries. B. New business. Approval and passage of resolution 2018-039, a resolution granting approval to operate an outdoor special event for the Chicago Bears located at 145 Lakeview Parkway, which obviously is Vernon Hills High School. You guys want to come up? <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I'd uh, be happy to just introduce. Please come up. Um, our, our guest here tonight, let them introduce himself, but maybe tee this up for the board. Um, the, the village uh, received this special event um, permit request. We've had preliminary conversations with the Chicago Bears, Vernon Hills High School, um, Vernon Hills Park District, Stevenson High School, um, some internal staff discussions, and uh, look, looking at the concept that the Bears are laying out from a staff point, we think this is something that uh, uh, we could uh, support uh, effectively if the board uh, chooses to uh, move forward. So with that, I'll ask the Bears and the Yeah, well, I, I know Mr. Stein here, so you want to state your name for the record, please? Good evening. Uh, Cliff Stein, General Counsel for the Chicago Bears. I'm here also with John Tarpey, our Director of Security, uh, and Mr. McDonald from Vernon Hills High School. We're happy to, uh, something that's been in the works for, for actually a few years. We're, two years ago, we, we started a, uh, we call it Varsity Bears, so we conducted a Bears outreach program where we go to the community and hold a practice. And we did it at Warren High School. In 2016 and 2017, we did it at Prospect High School and it was very successful. Communities love it. Um, it's a good chance for people that can't go to the city or can't go to the game or training camp, have an opportunity to come and see the Bears practice. And this will be the first year in over a decade that we're not doing Family Fest at Soldier Field, which was also like, a, a simulated practice for the fans that <coughs> wouldn't be at a game but can come see practice. So this will really be the only time this year that fans would have the opportunity to come see the Bears practice other than um, training camp. So we reached out to, to the high school and to the community and to the village and um, you know this is an excellent venue for us. It's an it's ideal venue. Um, and just another opportunity for the Bears to do something in this in this community. So, how many people do you think will come out? Uh, we're we're estimating about five thousand. Okay. And last year at Prospect, which was a smaller venue, we uh, we put seventy five hundred tickets out for sale and, and got just under five thousand people. What are tickets cost? Free. Tickets are free. free. Oh. Parking is free. It's a completely free event. Well, yeah, I mean, by all means, this would be great. Uh, Trustee Cook. And just a quick question. The Family Fest thing is because of the additional 
preseason game this year at at Canton for the. Not no. I mean, no normally um, it would have been that weekend. I'm, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Not necessarily because oh. we could do that any time. We just decided because of all the there's a lot of cost involved for the fans and logistics and get down there and just okay. it's been an ongoing no, I, kind of I, thing we are an, an analyzing. Yeah, I know. I think this is a, uh, a great idea. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be as long as entertainment and. I'm good with it. He's good. Absolutely. Joseph Yappen. So I'm um, curious, you said there are about 5,000 tickets, and how are you deciding how they're going to be distributed if they're free? So we are going to allocate a certain number to, to the high school, and if the village so, so wishes yeah. as well. Um, and then the rest are going to go out for sale. They'll sell within hours. Last year they sold within hours. And we'll target the Vernon Hills community, but It'll be open to anyone. But you just, you do it through your website? Do you have a? Yes, we will release it and through our. The website, and then there's a Bears app that also. Yeah, it's got to be on a mic. You need to be on a microphone. Sorry, yes, correct. There's a there's a Bears app. There's also uh, and a website. So and they do target it to this community. So the tickets will will likely go to people here. It's a free, uh, obviously free, like you said, uh, and then. There's a four ticket limit, but with that many, they get as many as they can. So usually we put out 5,000. I think last year we put out 7,500 and we had 4,700 people attend. So 63%. What, what's our capacity at the stadium in terms of actual seating? Yeah, we, we, we've met with the high school, looking at the logistics of it. We're, we're comfortable we yeah. can get 5,000 people. Um, in in the venue, and then there is some overflow it, area on the outside of the fence um, that uh, some stragglers and you know so five thousand I think is a good good planning number for us. Uh, probably the biggest challenge that we are talking about, and and the Bears and the high school have been very proactive, is uh, parking and traffic. It's it's an evening, it's a weekday. Um, we're going to do everything we can to try and communicate to people how. Uh, to get there without um, further logging up some of those uh, side streets. So we're going to work on it. Yeah. In terms of parking, as you see from the, from the map, <coughs> we uh, secured American Hotel Register Company through Mr. Tarpey's great work, working with that company. They're actually going to release their employees early so we can have the parking sure. all day. Yeah. Um, and then, so that's close to 1,000 spots. We have the Vernon Hills High School, which is close to 500 spots, plus another 150 for right behind the stadium. Um, so we feel like based on the expected capacity, we'll have more than enough parking. And we're also reaching out to BD, uh, which is right next door to the high school. Yeah, I'm sure it'll take shape okay. I mean, well, I, what, well across America, they get how many, how many people come to this thing? More, more than 15,000 yeah. people at the yeah. lacrosse right. event. Yeah. So yeah. We, we, we've got experience moving people in. A, it, a little bit of a difference yeah. is that's a weekend. I'm a little worried about uh, evening, but I'll, I'll take this opportunity to say something we're going to say a lot. The parking at American Hotel not only is going to be excellent parking, but avoid all the traffic. We'll have officers directing traffic into and out of so anyone that parks right off of uh, Milwaukee Avenue, American Hotel, will have a much easier time navigating traffic. Yeah. And we'll do whatever we can with promoting to do the right way finding so that they come in that way. Yeah. So And so when are you going to start Bears Fit? Um, well, that's that's a different topic where we have. It's in the works. Um, I don't want to totally play all my cards here, but we're excited. It's going to be a great surprise for the community. Okay. So are we. This bears, it says it's from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., so the tickets, they can come for the whole time, or is it? The 8 a.m. is really just giving us time to do all the necessary stuff. Gotcha. So when's the event actually? 4 o'clock. Oh, okay. Gates and parking will open at 4 o'clock, and the okay. practice starts at 6 o'clock. Gotcha. So literally the players won't have to change. They'll come in a bus, all dressed, ready to go, get off. They'll practice from 6 o'clock to 8.50. Okay. And then they'll leave at 9 o'clock. There'll be fireworks, and everybody will be out by 9.30. Okay, got it. Okay, I was just curious because I saw yeah. that. All right, thank you. Okay. So maybe in, in the future after Bears Fit opens, then you'll just make it an annual event to have it at our facility, MG, yeah. every year instead of yeah. going to other communities. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. 
Second. Roll call. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Trustee Hemda. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Marquard. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Yes. Subject to our working out the logistics with uh, Mr. McDonald, when can we start promoting it and yeah. doing everything yeah. we need to do? Yeah. yeah. In the, the morning. Years? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carl Blyer had to pay his liquor fine. You yeah, can start in, in the, the morning. morning. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. All right. You're, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Take you. care. Thank, Thank you. I might come back for that. <laughs> I may have to come back on that Wednesday. I'm not working and I don't have to babysit, so I may drive up from Indianapolis and come back. Come back to the Wednesday, Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. President, before you adjourn or yeah. wait, request wait. a motion. Um, if you, if we could go back and revisit item O on the omnibus agenda, I have an answer for you. Um, the judiciary all comes out of the same account. It's 520510. It's the same account number. It's just broken out by different groups. Um, each legal firm represented here, we do a purchase order for with the maximum amount that's approved in the budget. So what we would be doing is we would just be increasing the purchase order amount for Mr. Hunt to replace uh, Shane Banks, Bernie, and their number will just disappear. So should we go ahead and prove it? Tonight? Yes, we, we, we will not oh, need sure. to modify the budget to do an amendment to the budget, so I would encourage us to approve it. Okay, okay. motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquardt? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Trustee Hevda? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, any other? Also, one more one more little announcement, yeah. if you can indulge me. We were, it reminded me when the Bears were here for Bears Fit. Uh, Chicago Lacrosse Cup is being held this weekend uh, through tomorrow. I'm sorry, this week through tomorrow in Deer Path Park. Uh, this is a college recruiting event, and more than 50 colleges will be present to, present to recruit high school students that are colleges might be a great opportunity for people to stop by and just watch some good lacrosse games. Yeah, just the Deer Path Park yeah. area. Correct. Okay. All right, good. Okay, Thank any you. other business to come before the board? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I wanted to put into the record, I think all of you received a letter from the Park District regarding the Gardner School Daycare Facility. And um, I just wanted to read this because I think it's important that we understand where they're coming from. It says, Dear Trustee Hevdad, the Vernon Hills Park District Board of Park Commissioners recently learned of the Village Board's support of the concept of the Gardner School Daycare Facility. We could not be more opposed to seeing this project advance. As you know, our DCFS licensed daycare facility and our Lakeview Center has operated the past five years since we took over the YMCA. As a partner with the village in this acquisition, we would hope you would understand our concerns with other competitive daycare facilities operating one block away from our center, especially one with a fee structure of such as Gardner School, which is in line with our current daycare fees. We average approximately 16,000 annually for a full-time student in our program, and Gardner is averaging about 18,000 for the same. Furthermore, contrary to to the statement made by the Gardner School owner at your meeting, CDW, Kinder Care, and Our Little Learners all have the ability to enroll additional students. None of these facilities are at capacity. Thank you for your consideration of the Park District Board of Commissioners position that the village abolished further advancement of this concept. Um, and it's signed by all the commissioners, Dave Dorhoffer, James Ballou, Cynthia Kessler, Mike Moline, and Bruce Robbins. So I guess as we move forward, I would ask that this be talked about seriously and reconsidered um, for future endeavors as to what's going to happen over there by the um, old theater. Do you happen to know if the Park District is forming, formalizing a formal presentation for the planning and zoning? That I don't know, but we could certainly reach out and I could ask Joe if you could reach out to them too and ask them if they would do so, so that they can at least hear it there as well. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay, any other business? Is there a motion to adjourn the board uh, meeting and go into the committee of the whole? So made. Second. Motion is second. Roll call. Trustee Takaoka. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Trustee Cook. Aye. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. 
Motion carries, I'd like to call the community at a whole meeting to order. First item has got to be approving the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Oh, I got it. Oh. Yeah, okay. June 5th, 2018. June 5th, 2018. Okay, June 5th, 2018. And, uh, motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, comments, questions, deletions, corrections, uh, roll call. Trustee Hebda? Aye. Trustee Schultz? Aye. Trustee Marquard? Aye. Trustee Cook? Aye. Trustee Oppenheim? Aye. Trustee Takaoka? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, first item request from Regency Centers for approval to amend Melody Farm Special Use Permit, waiving certain separation requirements for mass, uh, massage establishments. Anybody here for that? Yep. Here. Please. And who's who here? I'm Adam Foray with Regency Centers. I handle the leasing at Melody Farm. I'm David Penn. I'm the regional developer for Massage Envy here in Chicago. Okay. All right. Well, so what's the picture? Uh, as you can see, Massage Envy is interested in leasing space. We have an executed lease with them to lease 4,477 square feet in Building E. And my understanding is there's an ordinance in place that would restrict that use there due to its uh, vicinity to the residential, as well as to potential full service restaurants serving alcohol within the uh, development. So we're requesting a variance, uh, a variance yes, to the PUD. I can help with getting a little more specific. The, uh, uh, the, in the licensing requirements for massage establishments, it requires that a massage establishment be at least 1,000 feet from a residential building. Uh, they're approximately 35 feet from the the residential building behind them and also requires that they be 300 feet away from a restaurant that's licensed to sell liquor they would be uh, approximately 150 feet to building g1 where it is anticipated restaurants will be located and they'll be 200 feet away from city works and also from building g2 so what's uh, what's being requested tonight is to amend the pud to allow Massage Envy to be located at the location that you see on the site map in front of you and waive those two separation requirements. Uh, approving the waiver then would apply only to Massage Envy in Melody Farm. Uh, the requirements uh, in licensing, uh, in the Massage Licensing Ordinance would remain in place for any other request that came uh, before the village in the future. Um, so the board tonight in looking at this request needs to determine if this waiver uh, changes the concept or intent of the PUD, if you determine that it does, uh, then the request should be forwarded to the Planning and Zoning Commission for further review and reopening of the public hearing. If the board feels that the changes are minor and do support the intent of the special use permit, then it would be appropriate uh, to direct staff to prepare an ordinance uh, making the amendment. Staff is supportive of the request uh, Massage Envy has been in the village for, I believe, seven or eight years now. Uh, they would re uh, comply with all the other requirements uh, of the uh, licensing, uh, excuse me, the licensing requirements for massage license. And again, this waiver would only apply to Massage Envy located in Melody Farm. So again, with that, if the board concurs with staff's recommendation, then staff should be directed to prepare the ordinance, amending ordinance 2016-045, which is the original ordinance that approved the special use permit for Melody Farm. Trustee Schultz. Uh, I'm a no. Um, I just, I don't want to set a precedent, even though you're telling me that the precedent isn't a precedent. <clears throat> I'm just not comfortable with it. Um, and this is one, it, it's part of the cannibalization too. I know we've allowed a certain amount of cannibalization, but I'm a no. Okay. Trustee Markworth. Just a question. Um, in the mall, you have, uh, what is it, Mario, Mario Jericoshi. And next to it, you have uh, Majano's. So I'm trying to actually see what the difference is from there to this concept. Yeah, it's a good question. In the licensing provisions for massage establishments under the definition of a massage establishment it, it specifically states uh, a business whose principal use is to provide massage services and then it goes on to specifically exempt 
facilities such as spa or other, or, or other similar types of uses where massages are offered as an ancillary use, as, you know, and is not part of the principal use. That would be Mario Tricosi, that would be the spa down in the town center, uh, I forget the name, and uh, probably a couple other locations within the village. So, but Massage Envy is exclusively massage services, so they would be subject to the licensing requirements and the separation uh, requirements as well. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments or questions? Uh, well, the one thing I'll say is that, uh, in all honesty, this isn't going to generate a nickel's worth of uh, revenue for the village. Significant. So, does he happen? So, if we vote no, then does it automatically go to planning and zoning? Is that? If, if you voted no, then there'd be really, you're not directing it that, then you would not be directing it to the Planning and Zoning Commission for reopening of the public hearing. So only, so if we vote yes, then it goes to Planning and Zoning or what, I missed that uh, comment. You could do, if you want to move forward, well, you could do two things. You okay. could, you could determine that it, that the amendment is minor and doesn't change the intent of the special use permit that was originally approved by the board, and then you just direct staff to prepare an ordinance amending ordinance 2016-045, you can do that. You could forward it to the, you can determine that, hey, you know, this waiver is substantial. We think it should go back to the Planning and Zoning Commission to reopen the public hearing. That would be your second option. Or you could just vote it down as well. The petitioner would always have the right to petition to the Planning and Zoning Commission, but they would certainly get clear direction from the board if you voted no. Okay. I would like to add two things, if I can. Um, in speaking with the sales agents at the Atworth, the residential component, they have told us that potential tenants have actually found it a benefit to have massage envy when they've told them that's potentially who's going right outside some of the southern units. They view it as a quiet, calm use that's not going to disturb any of their uh, apartments that they have there. And uh, Mr. Mayor, the massage envy is actually located south already in River Tree Court, so it would not necessarily affect the taxes in that instance. So they yeah. will leave River Tree Court? They would be yeah. locating yeah. up, they'll, yes. They'll be relocating. The reason yes. we're relocating is because uh, we need a larger clinic uh, because of the business volume itself. So, and you know, that'll, that clinic will employ 25 to 30 therapists. Uh, so it's a, it's a very growing business. So we need to expand it and that's why we're moving across the street to do this. So and what kind of therapists? Massage therapists. So they're the old currently. The Navy building is still available, I think. What's that? No? The old Navy building is still available. That's 30,000 square feet. Oh, you can come and use it. Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of, again, I, I guess my recommendation is one of two things. Either you do as, as stated here, or we go through the formal process, which I've done many What's times. What's the square footage of this location? It would be about 4,500, yep. 4,400, 4,500 square feet. And where are you at? And currently you have. 2950 square feet, so we're looking at a major increase in size. Yeah. And it's a, it's a location. We, we put stuff in very good prime mm -hmm. retail centers. We have 47 of these across the Chicago land area, so it, and I've gone through a lot of special use processes itself. So I would say if you don't approve it as, as an exception, that you allow us to go through the planning commission and go through a formal process, what do you call it, a land use variance or a special use process. And as far as attracting other tenants to the shopping center, Massage Envy has proven to be very beneficial. Uh, Andreas Hogue, our high-end salon, is doing a second location from Northbrook, and they like that they would have a co-tenancy near Massage Envy, as well as European Wax Center. So having the Massage Envy brand there has definitely helped lease the rest of the shopping center in that area. Okay, is there a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Is there a sec? Is there a second? Well, it sounds like we're probably against it, so why don't we just, I'll second it, and then we can vote it. Okay, there's a motion and a second. And uh, the motion is to, to approve. approve. To approve. To uh, it, presented. It would be direct staff to prepare an ordinance um, uh, 
amending ordinance 2016 yeah. 045 yeah. approving waiving the separation requirements uh councillor hunt uh, obviously the issue of whether you like the use or not or whether you think it's an appropriate modification is a policy decision uh, my only recommendation is if you were going to do it it makes more sense to do it as an amendment to the pud rather than changing the licensing ordinance which would then allow future users the right to do it elsewhere without approval or review by you okay uh roll call trustee schultz no trustee marquardt no trustee cook no trustee oppenheim no trustee takaoka trustee hebda aye um, motion fails thank you okay All right, what's next? Uh, request for the Vernon Hills Lions Club to operate an outdoor special event the for way. the Kelly Miller Circus at American Hotel Register. Okay, John. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I, I can give the board a quick summary if you wish. It, uh, the circus would be held as in past years uh, on the parking lot uh, west of American Hotel Register. There would be uh, entertainment that includes trapeze artists, uh, music magicians, uh, high-flying swings, and similar acts. Animals would not be part of the cir uh, circus. Um, proceeds, as in the past, would support the Vernon Hills Lions Club. Uh, uh, the event would take place on Friday, excuse me, from Friday, September 7th to Sunday, September 9th. Uh, Showtimes would be Friday, 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Saturday, 2 o'clock, 5.30 and 8 p.m., and finally Sunday, 2, 5, and 8 p.m. Uh, the special event application, uh, along with the site plan, is attached to your packet. If the board feels the temporary use is appropriate, staff should be directed to prepare a resolution approving the special event subject to the conditions that are outlined in your packet. A motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second, comments or questions? If none, roll call. Yeah, just the one oh. comment, just to reiterate, no animals. Therefore, no. we don't have the issues that we've had in the past that caused us to have a certain amount of consternation and, of course, then the hiatus of Kelly Miller uh, being your key fundraiser for one year or two years. It was 2015, the last one. Yeah, so a couple of years. Yeah, so. yeah, that was that's that's the way they <clears throat> they led when they called me. They, they like coming to Vernon Hills, and sure. and they called me again. And I said it's not going to fly, and said we have no animals, and so I said what does no animals mean? And and uh, they're willing to do it. No pony rides, no dogs, no nothing. There won't be just a lot only of jugglers two. and acrobats. Yes, and yes, yes. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll. Uh, Get a motion. Got a motion, right? Motion. Roll call then. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Oh. Trustee Cook. Trustee Cook. Trustee Cook. Uh, <laughs> come back to that. Going twice. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Trustee Hebda. Aye. Trustee Schultz. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Sir, this is a small dollars that we raise compared to the school issues and things you're talking about, but it does buy a lot of hearing aids and eyeglasses. Yeah, it's good. That's yeah, good. it's good. And and also, just so you know, uh, there used to be a Lions Club in Mundelein. There used to be one in Libertyville. They both folded. Yeah. So we're, we're, we see the future having responsibilities in those two villages. Or we're going to assume responsibilities in those did, villages. Did any of the members come with you guys? We got a couple to come, yeah. 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 So. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. I was just going to yeah. publicly thank uh, the American Hotel Registry Register for using the space for this, yeah. as well as for the Bears event. Yes. So I thought that should be in the record. That's fine. Yeah. Plus the Lacrosse America event, because they, yeah. they send a lot of volunteers for that one. Yeah. OK, Panda Express. Yo, Panda. Oh. Oh. Hold it. Yeah. All right. Is there a motion uh, to adjourn? Hold it. Are you sure? I, I, I didn't think, want to. Uh, I didn't want, want to talk about it. You want to make Ms. a motion Hefto. to adjourn? Motion yes. to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> motion to second. <laughs> Roll call. Trustee Cook. Trustee Oppenheim. Aye. Trustee Takaoka. Trustee Hebda. Aye. 
Trustee Schultz. Aye. Trustee Marquardt. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Trustee Hebda, for your service to the community. No, it's, it's been a good, nice it's a good, ride. It's been a good ride. Yeah. It's been a really good ride. All right. That's fine. Yeah. By one vote.